Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. Today we're doing the Hope Character Review Part 1, brand new unit as part of the Final Fantasy XIII collaboration, coming out this week alongside Lightning and Snow. Interesting character, to say the least, and we're going to talk a whole lot about why. Now, Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Today we're going over the character overview, the base and total stat analysis, their crit, hit, and avoid, accuracy, evasion, all culminating to the report card, which will give some snapshot sneak peeks to what I think about in Part 2. And obviously, once the character gets released, and I can really stress test them, that's where parts two and parts three become a little more intricate and have a little more value. So I'll have those out in a couple days. But for now, the character overview, brand new light unit for the game. They gave him the unique job of future hero with the red mage and time mage sub jobs. They also gave him the unique weapon of boomerang. And he can equip hat cloth and accessory with a move of three, jump of one as a cost 90 unit. Now, weapon type resistances, overall not the worst. 15% to magic, so that's definitely his forte. 10% to missile, with then 5% to slash. Neutral to strike with a minus 5% to pierce. No glaring weaknesses from that perspective. He is a 97 faith unit as well as a magic caster, so you will want to keep an eye out for these status ailment resistances. Overall, confusion, pretty decent one given some of the prevalence we've seen in some of the recent metas. With slow resistance as well, not one we commonly see as often, and 10% to toad. Overall, probably not the best status ailment resistances, but also could be a lot worse. Now, we look at the base stat perspective of things. He is, I don't know how to describe this, he is a damage deal. He is a TPS, but he's really more of a support. So he does kind of come into that hybrid. He's a very unique kind of support, though. We'll talk more about that soon. But just for contextually speaking, how you should think about these stats. You can see he's right here next to Velus in terms of base HP. Also near some of the ranged units like Cetia. Right above some of the evade units like 2B and Farm. So overall skewing a little bit lower on the HP side of things, but not terribly so. He's actually a little more bulky than I would have given him credit for as kind of that support DPS blend. Uh, so he's literally at number 60 out of 120, so right in the middle. Uh, rank wise when you look at his magic stat he does skew extremely high he's a top 10 base magic unit which does great things for his potential offensive output wherever it may come from we'll see more about that soon but overall this is really promising that his base magic is so high when you look at agility this is where we start to see some of the cracks in the unit definitely skews much lower here 55 base agility is by far on the lower side of things for turn order. And we're going to reconcile that to the total stats in just a second here. Dexterity wise, also woefully low. So not someone you're going to want to rely on for critical hits. His accuracy is going to suffer for base dexterity this low. And any dexterity scaling things you're going to give him are really not going to have a terribly large impact. When we look at luck though, kind of the opposite end of the spectrum, top 20 luck unit here. So that helps his creative void, does help his accuracy as well too. So a little bit of a trade off here. I think this is really just more for, for balance reasons. And we'll talk more about that in the creative void section in just a second here. But when we reconcile the base stats to the total stats here and include the board nodes, the mastery abilities as well, base stats, as we saw, his real strengths are on the magic side of things and the luck skewing pretty high as well. When you add in all those extra stat sources, though, there are some changes where uh, HP, he does not get as much love as many characters do, so he does lose some relative ground there. They actually do make up for that low agility with the board just a little bit. And then his luck, they actually jip him on a little bit from the board as well to bring things down. So when we actually end up quantifying that, they gave him nine agility here. The average is like seven or eight. So it's nice they made up for that low base agility just a little bit. And then dexterity and luck, they did skew a little bit lower compared to other characters. So all in all, where he ends up, definitely some typical weaknesses for a damage dealer, but as a support, it doesn't really come into play as often. So although these are weaknesses by how we can typically consider them, I don't think it actually affects his gameplay material. And we'll talk about that at the report card and way more in part two as well. Now we look at the crit hit and crit avoid. Both of these scale entirely off of the dexterity and the luck. So they end up kind of where you saw them on that last slide here. Dexterity crit hit rate is definitely not something to be relied upon. Very, very low. And his crit avoidance, although he has the base, the high base luck stat, it ends up being kind of in the middle here. Then again, though, if you are running in with evade units and you have those 35% uh, luck cards and really boosting that luck stat that crit avoid rate is going to go much higher because of that high base luck so there is some promise there in effect accuracy wise we saw you know nothing really special here definitely skews average to below average so he is 158 percent accuracy compared to the average 160 this blue line is the total innate accuracy that looks at dexterity luck and the mastery ability the green line is when you take into account for the passives and he has no passives that do anything to boost his accuracy so he falls relatively behind everyone else in that regard where the average 
boosts up to this 171 percent and he gains nothing to keep competitive with many of the other characters so he is definitely not an accurate unit in the least that's actually okay we'll talk again more about why soon uh, evasion wise although he's got that high luck stat i'm generally not considering him an evade unit it's probably just like 10 or 15 percent just a little bit too low to really have any potential to dodge things that being said you might see it happen on a one-off but definitely not reliable now when we get into the final report card here uh, and i have it here as a dps report card but he really is an interesting dps support hybrid and kind of spoiling things for part two his support comes in non-curative ways. So it's really in the form of buffs for teammates. The time age sub job is a big part of that. The utility that he gives and debuffing some of the enemy characters. So although he does do damage, and I say that he's a DPS because his AI prioritizes enemies when they're in range. When you have an AI that does that and it prioritizes damaging attacks, I consider that a DPS. If you're a character that instead when enemies are in range heal and support your teammates, then you're really more of a pure support. Now, when we look at the effective HP, we saw from the base. Overall, I'm giving him a C. It's actually not in the worst place in the world. There's a couple of things that give him some excellent survivability potential. From a physical perspective, I am giving him a D here where he's got no innate defense or ways to boost it. Magic is definitely a saving grace though, where he does get 12 spirit on a passive. He's got that higher magic resistance innately. He does have 10 AOE resistance innately, and he gets up to 30 with a buff, and that buff will also give him minus 6% hate. So when you're talking about overall survivability, it's really not in the worst place. Now his primary stat, I'm giving him an A. We saw exceptionally high base magic. He does have on his low cost ability and his limit break buffs that'll boost his magic by 40%. So some combination of those will yield higher magic as well. Agility wise, I'm giving him a C minus. Uh, with passives, he gets 64 agility versus the average of 67 with passives. So just slightly below where you'd normally like to see. And as a support unit, you kind of want to see them get a few more uh, turns in the rotation of things, but that's okay. Not, not every character can be broken or OP or meta defining, totally fine. Uh, accuracy wise, I'm giving him a D. This is where things really fall apart. Uh, it's sorely lacking, but I'll be honest, not a bad thing. And let me tell you why. If you're running him into a very high evade team and he's got hit rates that are, let's say, 0%. Well, that means that he's not going to prioritize his damaging abilities and he's going to continue to buff his teammates, which is really not a bad thing. If you're running the time age sub job and he gets into the middle of the battlefield and he can't hit an enemy evade unit and so he opts to use haste or quicken on a teammate instead, there is nothing wrong with that. That's actually a genuinely good thing. So I kind of like that they did this trade off here with the accuracy so that if you come into those situations, he still provides value by buffing his teammates. He does have some damaging abilities one that is an aoe resistance down so even if he has like a 20 percent chance to hit even if he doesn't land that hit he'll still add the imperil so there's there's a lot of good things here i don't wouldn't let that d mislead you overall we get to the evasion i am also going a d definitely not an evade unit movement wise giving him a c no real ways to change that move three jump of one passives i'm giving him a b i actually like a couple of his passives some of them you're probably going to be hard stuck on using in certain instances but overall there's some versatility and the potency of one of them in particular is really cool counter abilities i'm actually giving him an a minus he's got some genuinely really great counter abilities i actually can't pick between two of them so I, I think that's a really good problem to have overall kit i'm going a b i don't think it's the worst kit in the world he does have some unique mechanics that are new to the game which is pretty cool and interesting and the final grade big asterisk on this one i'm going b minus but there's a lot to unpack in this final grade and he's most definitely more niche and usage but he's more skewed toward pve so when i give these reviews and we talk about characters we really talk about them from the perspective of things like guild wars and arena class match things like that so the grades tend to skew toward their usability there from that perspective snow has some definitive weaknesses but he's got two buffs that are kind of universal. One of them is the increased physical damage 20% to teammates, which is kind of great for rainbow comps if you need to, that you can do an attack buff and do this physical percent damage buff, and those two of those will stack because they're two different mechanics. He's got another one here. That's the slash and magic resistance up for allies, which again, kind of can be used in some rainbow comps if you need to. One of his more favorite abilities is light attack up. So that is unique to light comps only. But with that time age sub, you could also throw him in a variety of different places and utilize the quicken uh, and haste abilities there too. So this final grade is genuinely misleading, but the best I can probably do is just say he's more niche and skewed toward PVE. And there is nothing wrong with that. He's a free unit at the end of, at the, end of the day. How much can we complain but that's the hope part one review in a nutshell definitely interested to talk to you more about part two and part three seeing where you can get the most benefit out of them and exploring some of these weaknesses a little more but that's it for now thanks for watching everybody and i'll talk to you all soon